didn't age well. I think Diddy took the concept way too literal. You know how the saying goes, besties that commit crimes together stay together? The first time I ever saw Jay-Z or even heard him spit a rhyme was at an MC battle, street battle in New York. He showed up as a nigga that was with Big L. Yes. Big L was who put Jay-Z on. And then Big L died and then the next thing you know, Jay-Z. Doing songs with Biggie and building a working camaraderie with honeycombs. And then Biggie died, Tupac died. There was the, the, the fight between who was the top rapper now, Nas and, and Jay-Z. And then the next thing you know, Nas has a nervous breakdown and he's taken out of the game and then saw Jay-Z. He will slump anyone in any relationship for a dollar. Look at how he did Dane. If you're a halfway intelligent person, when do you start questioning how lucky some motherfuckers keep getting? Right. Who is Sean approved from the world of entertainment? There's only one person. Oh, go on. And I call him Sean. That's Jay-Z. We call each other Sean. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Nobody else could call me Sean. He's and the no, only person who's Sean single, approved. There's not a single person that, that outside should be, of family. That should be, no, outside of my mother. Okay, just that should be calling me. Yeah, that should be calling me Sean. What's next for the two besties? Matching criminal records, perhaps? When Jay I say Corey, I'm talking about Kathy White. Oh yeah, that's what I was about to ask. Uh, Jay Z's Jay -Z's, pregnant mistress, yeah. who died of an imaginary fucking aneurysm, just like the woman who was best friends with Kim and Kimura, who wrote the book Bling and died as soon as it made the bestsellers list. Who the fuck was these people supposed to go to? You can't go to the boss because the boss is fucking you. And the boss is boss? Don't get no fuck. Can't go to the authorities. They're all bought and paid for. Fuck you go when you get fucked over by the industry. Nowhere. That's where you go nowhere, which is where people like me step in. Yep. And he was in that man's house and he saw that man's wife who was like this. I was watching Puff. And nigga Puff was looking all down. He saw this, this, this white woman. It was bottles on bottles on bottles around her. It was lit. Puff jumped out. Me and Cassie sitting next to each other. My wife right here, Cassie right here. The nigga jumped off the bar, came over and said, Yo, yo, Cassie, tomorrow, I want you to shave the side of your head. And I was like, I'm like, what the f kind of request is that? <laughs> like, so when I'm like, what? so when I look up there, this white woman side of her head was shaved, my nigga. And the bitch looked good with it. So I was looking at Cass, I was like, well, I, I was like, you're not about to do that, are you? She said, well, I mean, whatever Sean wants, I'm gonna do. According to the New York Post, Jay-Z was charged with stabbing Lance Rivera. But Jay-Z was there when you got stabbed. Um, was yeah. actually in front of you when you got stabbed. Um, it was like, yeah. Me and Jay-Z had a conversation while, you know, um, right before I got hit in the head with a champagne bottle. Um, and it was a brief conversation and I was looking at him like, what are you talking about? And you know you fucking the money up right now. Well, what did he tell you? Um, he just kept saying, you broke my heart. You broke my heart. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, you're bucking right now, bro. You getting ready to fuck up everything. And, you know, and I don't, I don't know where people got Jay-Z stabbed me from because if anybody knows Jay-Z, Jay-Z's a nice guy, right? He's an artist. He's, he's, he's a poet. He's gifted. And it's never been his history. You know, if, if Jay-Z had to stab me, y'all wouldn't have got the Black Album, you know, because through my whole history, I'm a eye for an eye type of guy, you know? Um, Unfortunately, I, I got stabbed that night, but the, the reality to it is, you know, Nas, you know, and I don't know why didn't, didn't nobody believe him. On Ether, he said, <laughs> they, they, it, I've talked about the incident, you know, like 
he let people know like, yo, your man stabbed on you, you took the blame for it. You know, and unfortunately, you know, he 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 was caught up in a power struggle. You know, he he it, it was it was all about the power to, you know, to get rid of Dame Dash, you know, and, and take Jay-Z to the next level without Dame. When I told him what I suspected, to my surprise, he got real loud with me right there in the middle of the club. It was strange. We separated and I went over to the bar. I was sitting there like, no, the fuck this dude did not just say that. Mm -hmm. I was talking to people, but I was really talking to myself out loud, just in a state of shock. Before I even realized what I was doing, I headed back over to him. But by this time, I was blacking out with anger. Mm -hmm. Next thing I knew, all hell had broken loose in the club. That night, the guy went straight to the police and I was charged with assault. Mm -hmm. So he described like you guys got together and you talked and you got loud with him. Mm -hmm. And then he separated and mm -hmm. came back. Mm -hmm. Did you get loud with him? No, absolutely not. I'm, I've never gotten loud with Jay. I've gotten loud with Dame. Dame okay. was the, the, the guy that I used to battle with in public and yell and scream because that's what the energy that he gave up. That's how Dame is. I Jay's know. a nice guy. Okay. Like I said, he's he's not a yeller. While Diddy was implicated in a high-profile club shooting. He now appears to be focusing on the gun possession and bribery charges against Sean Puffy Combs. This afternoon, jurors sent the judge two notes, one of which asked for a transcript of a phone message Combs left Wardell Fenderson, once his driver, now the prosecution's star witness. During the trial, Fenderson testified that Combs was armed the night of the shooting at Club New York and later pressured him to claim ownership of a pistol police found when they pulled over Combs's Lincoln Navigator as it fled the shooting. And I just want to make you feel like comfortable, you know what I'm saying? Make your family feel comfortable. What exactly Combs meant by that is in dispute. But the prosecution claims the rapper offered Fenderson $50,000 or a diamond ring to take the rap for the gun. The jurors also wanted to hear a readback of testimony relating to Combs's former girlfriend, actress-singer Jennifer Lopez, who was in the Navigator when it was stopped by police. An officer testified that everyone in the SUV was ordered to put their hands on the vehicle, but Lopez walked away, saying she was going home. As she was being detained, a gun was discovered in the vehicle. At that point, a sergeant on the scene ordered everyone who was in the vehicle under arrest. The drama escalated as Sean Diddy Combs faced additional legal troubles, with eight people suing him for sexual assault over the past five months. On May 21st, model Crystal McKinney filed her lawsuit against Sean Combs, Bad Boy Entertainment Holdings, Sean John Clothing LLC, and Universal Music Entertainment Group. And the statute says that it revives any claims against, quote, a party who commits, directs, enables, we'll talk about that, participates in or conspires in the commission of a crime of violence gen motivated by gender, has a cause of action against such party in any court of competent jurisdiction. Lane explains that when she was 17 years old back in 1998, McKinney won MTV's first model mission competition. She was given a modeling contract and her career started to take off with her appearing in all sorts of major magazines. And then in 2003, when she was 22 years old, McKinney says she was invited to attend a men's fashion week event being held in New York. Now the person who invited McKinney is only referred to in the filing as the designer. But according to McKinney, quote, the designer told plaintiff that he would be introducing her to Combs, which could advance her modeling career. The designer began to direct plaintiff's appearance as he sought to ensure Combs found her attractive. The designer then handpicked a black leather coat with a fur hood, a translucent chiffon, beige V-cut shirt, fur-lined handbag, and jewel-encrusted jeans for plaintiff to wear to the event. Due to the traumatic events to occur later, plaintiff saved the unwashed clothing from that night in her closet where they remain in a plastic wrap. Wow. Then he said he had the power to help her career, continued to be very flirtatious. He also allegedly kept plying her with alcohol. And at the end of the night, or the end of the dinner, he allegedly told her he wants to get to know her better. McKinney says she accepted her first hit of marijuana, but now believes it was laced with some other narcotic. McKinney claims that Combs then led her to a bathroom where he allegedly forced her to perform oral sex on him, despite her saying no. Quote, upon standing and walking, plaintiff felt more and more woozy and then lost consciousness. 
plaintiff awakened in shock to find herself in a taxi cab heading back to the designer's apartment. The lawsuit says that after the alleged assault, McKinney didn't get as much work in modeling or acting. Eventually, she couldn't get any work at all. Upon information and belief, Combs had plaintiff blackballed in the industry and utilized his significant influence to impede plaintiff's career growth. Plaintiff became severely depressed as she began to blame herself for the assault and for sabotaging her own career. The assault led plaintiff into a tailspin of anxiety and depression. In or about 2004, plaintiff attempted suicide and was hospitalized. McKinney also states that she was married from 2006 to 2010, but according to her, her relationship fell apart because she had a mental breakdown connected to this traumatic experience. And this all goes, by the way, to the harm element of a lawsuit. What did you suffer? What are you seeking? McKinney's lawyers state in the complaint, quote, as a direct and proximate result of the aforementioned crime of violence and gender motivated violence, plaintiff has sustained and will continue to sustain monetary damages, physical injury, pain and suffering, and serious psychological and emotional distress, entitling her to an award of compensatory and punitive damages, injunctive and declaratory relief, attorney's fees and costs, and other remedies as this court may deem appropriate. When she met Mr. Combs, Ms. Lampro shared with him her dreams of working in the fashion industry. And Mr. Combs promised to mentor her and help her by introducing her to music and fashion industry executives, as well as assisting her with finding work. Mr. Combs love bombed her. He showered her with gifts and flowers as evidenced by one of the cards that accompanied the flowers that Mr. Combs sent Ms. Lampros for Valentine's Day in 1994. A photo of the card from the New York florist, The Daily Blossom, says, Happy Valentine's Day, love Puffy. Mr. Combs went so far as to invite Miss Lampros to his first Father's Day celebration, and a picture of that invitation was included in this complaint as well. Now, from there, the complaint says that what started out as a love-bombing, flirty relationship quickly went south. This is according to Lampros. Quote, Upon information and belief, what Mr. Combs displayed as kind gestures quickly manifested into an aggressive, coercive, and abusive relationship based on sex. These acts were not isolated to the state of New York as Mr. Combs would fly Miss Lampros to Atlanta to see him, where they would spend time together. Miss Lampros would also fly to Miami to see Mr. Combs at his home. The filing includes two photos of Lampros purportedly at Combs' home in Florida. According to Ms. Lampros, Mr. Combs had a terrible temper and often threatened to harm her if she failed to do what he said, if he witnessed her talking to other men, or if she failed to take his phone calls. According to Ms. Lampros, she was also not allowed to talk about her relationship with Mr. Combs to anyone because he didn't want anyone to know he was seeing her because she is a white woman. This person, however, his name is Rodney Jones. He lived, traveled, and he worked with Diddy as a producer and he is alleging that he has hours upon hours of recorded footage and pictorial evidence, which has been included in this document, to support his claims. And I have to say, these claims seem very credible. Now, to be clear, Rodney, also goes by Lil Rod, uh, is suing Diddy and others, we're gonna get to who those others are, for $30 million, claiming that he was subjected to sexual misconduct for the duration of the production process of an album. It is a 70-page lawsuit that has been filed in the Southern District of New York. And he is claiming that while working on the album and living with Combs in New York, California, Florida, other locations, that Diddy repeatedly groped him, touching his, I'm sorry to say this guys, his anus and his crotch without consent and attempting to groom him into accepting a homosexual relationship by showing him explicit videos of others in Hollywood. Yes, they have named other artists, claiming that homosexuality was a normal practice in the music industry. It's also claiming that Diddy would walk around the house naked and force him to watch him shower. When Rockefeller was sold to Def Jam, where Jay-Z became the president, Dame Dash was left out of the deal and felt betrayed by Jay-Z. I took Jay-Z and shopped him to th every single label and they all said no. I wouldn't have been so generous with Jay to Jay. It was more friendship for me and money for him. But he did things that I thought he would never do. So now I would be like, oh, he would do that and I would make sure it didn't happen. How do you feel towards Jay-Z now? I don't feel nothing. The difference between Jay and Kanye and I say it, Jay is about the money, period. I did partnerships with my artists with the artists I work with in the businesses that I do now, just because I want people to maintain their manhood. 
Like, I don't ever say you signed to me. I don't, I'm, I'm not letting, I don't like the way that sounds. So, you know, even the verbiage and the, the whole thing, just your masters, you know what I'm saying? It seems that both men have had their hands full even before their debut in the music industry. 